when Caribbean delegations insist that we need to keep um, temperatures no higher than 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures, that is not esoteric science. That is based on what the models are saying. It is based on observation. And it is trying to keep us below those thresholds and tipping points. Previous attempts to reduce global emissions with the Kyoto Protocol have been inadequate. In fact, the worst case scenarios on global emissions envisaged by the UN two years ago are already being realized. The critical meeting at which we will hopefully be able to agree on a new global climate change agreement will be held later this year in Copenhagen. Um, it's quite critical because we think we are virtually out of time to come to a global agreement. As has been explained, we are, think that we might be approaching a tipping point if we haven't already, in fact, um, reached a tipping point where very little that we do will make a difference. The CARICOM Secretariat will be sending a delegation to negotiate on behalf of the Caribbean region. I'm very pleased that for the first time, heads of government of, of the Caribbean region are paying attention to this issue of climate change. So I think we can become a, a force because you're going to have 15 countries speaking the same language in Copenhagen, arguing for the same thing. Well, what we expect will come out of Copenhagen is a limit on greenhouse gas emissions um, that are legally binding but we want that done on an equitable basis. And I thought it's important that a country like Trinidad and Tobago makes that point because the basis for measuring these emissions, which is on a per capita basis, is not acceptable to us. What that does, that shields the countries with large populations who are the biggest transgressors and exposes unduly the countries with small populations like Trinidad and Tobago. We have 10 ammonia plants here, seven methanol plants, one oil refinery but a population of 1.3 million people. So on a per capita basis, our greenhouse gas emissions are very high. But in absolute terms, we, we, we put what, less than 1% of the emissions into the atmosphere. So it is important that as we put limits uh, on these emissions, there must be equity in the way it is done, taking into account the requirements of small countries. The need for fairness and equity must be balanced with the need for urgent global action. Developing countries in the UN have a block called G77 and China. So if you could imagine many small island developing states in the Caribbean and in the Pacific, okay, struggling for survival are in the same group with China and India, who are two of the largest emitters of greenhouse gases in the world. They need to arrive at some consensus. I think it is incumbent upon um, these developing states to impress upon their larger members like China and India that they can't be exempted from emissions reductions. Like the developed countries, they also have to commit along with the global community to emissions reductions. We cannot have any holdouts. Too much is at stake. The mounting concern for international action is not limited to scientists alone. Many leaders of industry are also calling for urgent action across the board. I'm not convinced that we have enough political will alone aligned across the world to create the kind of action that we need to create now. So I, I think it's, it's now left to people like me and to others who have spheres of influence across the world to act now. I, I think it's the, the action is required now. I think it's an an urgent and, and important imperative. You know, in, in looking at my notes and thinking about this, you know, there's a lot about the advocacy of greenhouse gases per capita or not per capita. I, I think we have to get out of those um, sort of uh, debates going nowhere and start to act. I, I think act with all the might we have. In 2008, the Caribbean region as a whole imported over 15 billion US dollars of fuel. And yet it is also a region with plentiful supplies of renewables, such as wind, solar, and geothermal energy. The Caribbean is one of the most carbon intensive 
regions <laughs> in the world. That means that our input of energy per unit of production is very high and hence we are uncompetitive. And this is not only to, uh, manufacturing but in our services industry, our tourism industry, the amount of energy that one has to spend for the tourism plant really is unsustainable. In fact, the way we produce and use energy is unsustainable. But there are tremendous opportunities now. The buzzword is low carbon uh, development pathways, which means energy efficiency measures right throughout the Caribbean, exploiting our natural resources, or solar energy, or wind energy, or the geothermal energy, or hydro. Uh, there's tremendous opportunities here. Countries such as Barbados are already leading the region with policies that favor the use of solar power. Other Caribbean countries should follow their lead and develop the relevant supporting policies for the new energy opportunities. Because policy, we believe, right policy is what will help to create the pathways to the renewable frontiers that are out there. At the moment, a lot of those technologies are difficult for businesses to pursue alone because of some of the economic challenges of them. Wise governments will create enabling policy and enabling incentives that will both help entrepreneurs as well as users. I think it's very crucial not just to the environment in the Caribbean but to, to the whole economic viability of the Caribbean. The Caribbean is struggling to afford hydrocarbon energy in a world that's competing for it. The Caribbean could easily reduce its energy needs through better public transport, recycling, and energy efficient buildings. The threat of climate change may seem insurmountable, but really what it is, is an opportunity to rethink and reinvent what we do here in the Caribbean, how we deal with hurricanes, food, water, energy, and the environment. By reaching out for solutions and actively engaging ourselves in the global climate change effort, we can overcome these challenges and also make our nations more sustainable. I think that we've reached a point now where we need to get this information out. And, and, and I think it's beginning to happen, but we have to move the, dis the debate to the point where it is not a debate among scientists anymore. It is a debate about our future and our livelihoods and the extent to which we can have a sustainable future. Um, and I think that until, until we get the debate focused in that direction, I think that we are not yet fully on the right track.